Hi everyone, this is Laura and today I would like to share with you um, my end results of my sunflowers that I made this weekend with my sunflower dye. Now this is going to be a tutorial. I have been um, playing all weekend long with my sunflower dyes um, and I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, doing some research uh, some of you may or may not know this, but I really have not had the pleasure of either making sunflowers or working with sunflowers before. I love them. I've always looked at them, but I've never seen them. And some of you may know what that means. You can look at something forever, but you may not see it. For instance, I had no idea. There were so many little layers and so many little colors involved in a sunflower. So I was really, really happy and pleased to be playing with that this weekend. So for all my new subbies and for the girls that are just tuning in who have been following me, as you may or may not know, I am now a designer um, or rather a design team member for DiamondEyes.com. And Diamond Eyes uh, has just sent out their DT packages. <coughs> and in my DT package, one of the dyes that I had received was this magnificent, beautiful sunflower dye. And this is the center. This is one layer and this is one layer. The dye comes in three pieces. It comes in this beautiful packaging see diamond dyes and they are made in the USA and they are compatible with all dye machines now I don't know how many of you have a big shot I do and I also have a big kick and I will say this I have two different machines and each machine cuts differently on my big kick I have a problem on my big shots I do not um, meaning that the rollers in my big kick, I think might have been a little bit more worn and warped. So, uh, note to all my new subbies, if you have a dye machine and you buy dyes and they don't cut all the way, it more than likely is not your dye. Unless there's something wrong with these cutting ridges, Chances are it's not your dies. It's more than likely your machine. And one of the ways that I solve that is by putting um, what's called a shim in between my layers. Now a shim can be anything. It can be a piece of cereal box, which is what I use. I happen to love that the most. It's not as thick as a chipboard and it's not as thin as cardstock. And it works just fine. So if you cut a piece of cereal box or an old any kind of box, uh, bo the box you get your tea from, the box, uh, any box, uh, pasta boxes, um, pizza boxes, any kind of cereal type thin layer um, cardboard. If you cut it to the shape of your platform and you run it using that shim, I promise you, your die will cut that much better. That being said, for this tutorial, <clears throat> the supplies you're going to need um, or the supplies that I used rather to make my flowers is a pair of tweezers. Um, I used whatever ink application you want to use, whether you have one of these little thingamajiggies or you have the daubers or some uh, makeup sponges, whatever you want, but you need something for the ink. I used the following colors of Distressed Ink. I used Wild Honey. I used Mustard Seed. I used Dried Marigold. I also used Spiced Marmalade. Gathered Twigs. And most favorite, Vintage Photo. You're also going to need some kind of either wet glue that dries quickly or your glue gun. I used my glue gun and my wet glue and I'll 
show you how I used both. You're also going to need a very small tipped paintbrush. Okay. So let me share with you. Oh, I almost forgot. You will also need a stylus. I was blessed and lucky enough to have um, D in our design package send us some styluses. However, I do want to say this. I actually, this is my, my own stylus. I have two sizes in these, the, um, the large and the small. You will definitely need something with a very small point and one of the larger ball ended points. So you're definitely going to need your styluses. And if you have a foam mat to work on, all the more better to shape your flowers. I found that what was key in making these flowers, what makes these flowers, what's, what makes the big difference in these flowers are the styluses and the foam and the way you shape them. Um, that's going to be everything. So you want to have that. So how I started, I just took some white cardstock and I just started cutting a whole bunch of petals and the little flower centers and I just cut, 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 cut. And I worked on these all weekend long. And let me share with you my be my, my first two flowers, <laughs> my successes and my non successes. This was the first one I made. And as you can see, um, this, these little intricate little, oh, where did she go? You see that little tiny, tiny, tiny little baby flower right there? I cut mine out in brown. You see that? What you're going to do with your teeny tiny stylus is you're going to push that in when we get there. But that's, that's what these are in the center. Yeah. And the reason I wasn't too crazy about this is after I had um, glued them on, I decided to throw some of the diamond dust twin by twinklets in the on top of the flower. And I wasn't too happy with how it came out. I actually prefer without the twinklets. Plus, I think it kind of pushed down my little buds just a little too much. And also... Since this was my first flower, I also realized I forgot to layer um, with the second layer of the smaller flowers. So this is what it would look like without the second layer. And I still plan to use it on a project. And this is what it looks like with the second layer, the smaller layer of flowers on top. And now can you see the difference in that? Yeah. So this is with, and this is without. And I just think they look a lot better with both layers on them. So these are some of the flowers that I was um, a tiny bit happier with that I want to share with you. And I have this one. And this one. I think I was most happiest with this one. And this one. And this one also. And I have this one. And this one. Now do you see what I mean about the... Um, don't they look like seeds? It looks like a real sunflower. And I had no idea what they look like, guys. I had to go online. Because like I said, I've seen them, but I haven't seen them. I never really took the time to see all the beautiful layers of what makes them so unique and pretty so <clears throat> to make the sunflower you're gonna need to cut a whole bunch of these now you can either cut it in uh, yellow cardstock whatever color cardstock you want I cut them out on white and as you can see here they are white it was white cardstock you're gonna need five pieces you're gonna need three of the large flower and two of the smaller flower. 
So after you cut out your five flowers, you're going to paint them all. And I painted them all with the mustard seed. I just took my little sponge applicator, dumped it in the mustard seed, and I just colored it all in with the mustard seed. After I colored it in with the mustard seed, then what I did, and I want to show you guys real quick, can you guys see those lines on the petals? Okay, that's scoring. What I did then was I went to my mat with the smallest pointed stylus and I just ran this along the leaves. And as I did that, that, that did two things for me. It made the petal curl up on its own, which I wanted for dimension. Plus, I think it gave the petals a more realistic look on being sunflower petals. And I don't know if the camera, I hope the camera's picking that up. So that's what I did to all my petals. I scored them all. I colored them all in mustard seed. And then once I did that, let me put these to the side. Once I did that, then what I did was I distressed all the edges on the tips with vintage photo. After I distressed them with the vintage photo, then what I did was I went into my wild honey, my dried marigold, and just randomly, not a lot, I just kind of pounced on them just to give it really um, different shading and variations of yellows and oranges. And if you want to stay um, more towards the yellow and less towards the orangey colors, that's fine. Um, being that it's fall and not spring, I kind of went a little bit more with the um, fallish um, and I made them very, I want to say, kind of rustic looking or grungy. So I added more vintage photo, um, wild honey, and dried marigold. And then I just pounced that on all the flowers. And then after I did that, then I glued them together. Now, when you layer them, Okay, wait. After I distressed all of them, then I took the petals back onto my flower, my foam mat. I took a large, my largest tipped stylus, the one with the biggest ball at the end, and I just went into circular motions like so. And I did this to all five layers of petals that I'm going to use to create the flower. I did this to all of them. And this one, I didn't do it to yet. I wanted to show you. And now, do you see how all, it just raised up all the petals? And that's what you want. You want that little indentation in the center. After I did that, then I went, and started gluing my layers together and you want to do the large layers first and these two I've done I'm gonna do the next few with you <coughs> now when layering your flowers um, you want to kind of play with the layers and try to get as many offset layers as you can and what I mean by that is you don't want too many um, spaces in between the petals because you want it to have that layered look and some of the petals are fatter than others and if you keep turning them just right for instance I'm happy with that there as you can see I don't see too much space in between my petals or too much uh, empty space. And remember, there's still another layer, even still another layer going on on top of that. So 
um, whatever other little layers you have, I'm sure they will be covered. So I take my hot glue gun and I just put a little tiny little dab there. And you want to make sure that wherever you're going to be laying your flower, if you're going to use a hot glue gun, that's where you, you're happy with it. Because once you glue that down, it's not going anywhere. Um, it's going to stay there. So again, I'm just manipulating my flowers. And wherever I see the biggest um, space between the petals, that's where I'm going to layer the next one on. You see that? And I got one more layer to do. And with this one, I'm just going to put the hot glue right in the center of the flower because I already have all my layers done. So I'm going to put this one right in the middle. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but this would be this layer. And then you see the next one underneath. It just fits in there perfectly. And now you have the five layers all together. Then what I like to do is I like to put it back on my foam mat. Again, using the biggest ball that I have of my styluses. And I just like to run it in the center again and just give it a little bit more pop. Just making room for the next step, which is adding little seeds to the center of the flower and that's what you're gonna have see same thing now like I said depending on the color and what you're happy with if you want them to stay yellow you leave it at that if you want it a little bit more darker you can still put even more color if you wanted to spray them that would be a good time. However, I am going to say this, guys. If you use the Distress inks to um, color your petals, you want to be careful about spraying it with anything because remember, it reacts to water. This ink does react to water, and you may not have the same flower that you started out with. So just a word to the wise. Um, if you're going to spray... Be prepared to have it totally change the color of your flower. So, okay, so that step is done. For my next step, I am going to take my vintage photo and my distress, um, my vintage photo and my gathered twig. And I'm just going to put some on my craft mat here. Now I'm going to take my small, teeny, tiny brush um, to color with. And what I'm going to do is I am going to spray some water on my mat because I want a dark and a light variation of what I'm going to do. You know what? Let me just wet my... Now you see that, guys? I'm mixing the gathered twig with the vintage photo because I don't want it as dark as the gathered twig, but I want it a little bit darker than the vintage photo. And I'm just going to add some water to that, mix it up. And then what I'm going to do is, as you can see on this flower, I just want to color the center of my flower. The reason I'm coloring the center of my flower is because... If I'm going to use these as little seeds to the center, there might be little gaps in between the seeds. And this is actually going to hide the yellow of the flower if there are a lot of gaps. Plus, looking at the photos of the sunflowers, this is actually the color that they are in the center. Um, or at least the photos that I saw. Now I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit more water and I'm going to water this down even more. I don't want this dark at all. The center, I do want dark, but not what I'm about to do. So I want it almost to, it's a very watered down version of the vintage photo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to flick a little bit of color 
pulling out. And if that's a little too light, I'll just go and grab a little bit more of my um, gathered twigs. Oh yeah, that's dark. I'm gonna have to water that down a little bit more. And I just wanna flick, flick, flick. And I'm gonna go all the way on the, around on the, I don't wanna go all the way over the, petal I just want to create a little bit of a shadow in the center of the flower and I'm going to do that all the way around and I just want to give little flicks I'm going to grab some more water and just water that down a little bit it's a little too dark And again, just doing a little flicks, little flicks, little flicks all the way around. And you're going to do that going all the way around the flower until you are happy with your shading. Um, some of you may like your centers very dark. Some of you may not like that um, watercolored, smudgy, shadowy look to it. Some of you may like it just like this, just nice, crisp, and clean. And you can do that too. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can do it any way you want. I like the water cutter. I don't know why, but some flowers always remind me of water cans, teapots, and water coloring. I don't know why, but it does. So I very much wanted the water colored effect to it. So I'm going to put this aside because it is wet and let that dry. But I did do one here for us already. So now when you get to this point, you already colored it, layered it. I colored my center. I did all the little shadowing that I wanted to do. Now I'm ready to put it, the center pieces, um, the seeds rather, the little flower buds in the middle. Now how I do that is I take my liquid glue and I just I put some on my craft mat, a little dab like that. Then I take my flowers and these are the little seeds in the center. They're little tiny teeny flowers as you can see there. And what you're going to do is you're going to put that on your foam mat. And you're going to take your stylus, the one with the smallest end, which I don't have. That's this one right here. Um, as small as you can possibly get. And you're just going to go in a circular motion until you see it rounding up like a little ball. You see that there? See how that just all the corners came up then what I like to do is I just like to um, poke it a little bit in the center and just press down on it and then let me share with you what that looks like and that's what that looks like there once I have it all rolled up into a little ball then I take my fingers I just tweak it a little bit more if I want it rolled up a little bit more I dip it, come on camera, focus, there we go. I dip it into the glue and I start with my center first. And I put that right there in the center. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lay, I'm just gonna keep doing that. Now, a tip to you ladies, so that your glue, if you're gonna do it this way, so that your glue does not dry out, what I did was, and I just want to turn this around and show you, I actually made a whole bunch of these in advance. Oh, I got glue on my mat. Oh, darn snookies. Um, what I like to do is I like to make a lot of these so that I can have them ready when I'm making my flowers and I don't have to stop and roll 
every single little ball up. This is something nice too to get the kids to do um, if you want to help you. My girls did not help me because they were busy doing homework and they didn't want to help mom. <laughs> they find this kind of stuff in my daughter's words boring <laughs> so yeah so I just keep working the little um, seeds and I just keep layering them I almost want almost like um, a beehive honeycomb effect um, I guess that's the best way I can describe how it looks to me and I smeared most of my glue with the mat so I'm probably gonna have to Go and get more glue and I didn't realize how far I am to you guys maybe this would help for you to see I'm gonna need a little bit more glue now another thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the center of this flower when you cut it out it actually cuts 12 tiny little rolls or rather flower buds for you to shape into your um for you to shape into your um flower centers your seed centers i cut 12 and since i have a nice big pile here that i had already done in advance i try to at least put 12 of these little faux C centers um, and I start in the middle but if I see a lot of empty space and I already used 12 I'll put more nobody says that there's no rule there that says you can't so if it doesn't look full enough to me with the 12 I'll just keep adding more and more and more until I'm happy with the center and I don't know if you guys can see that that's basically what's what it's gonna look like now had I not colored the center I just want to give you guys a look to see what it looked like Like I said, for those of you who like a much brighter, um, prettier flower, not so much distressing, this is something of what it could look like without all that treatment, to, you know, that I did to the center without the painting and the coloring and the distressing. So it's all on how you want to do it. So. I hope that this tutorial has helped um, any of you who are wishing to purchase the sunflower dye. I do have to do another video making a few announcements and showing you some of my dyes. Um, but I hope I hope this video helps you in creating some of these beautiful beautiful sunflower dyes I have many projects to do now for diamond dyes and one of my projects will be involving a lot of these pretty little sunflowers and I'm so happy to be able to play with them so guys give it a try and please remember, if you are interested in purchasing this die, which I hope you are, just go to diamonddies.com. And if you put Laura's friend in the coupon code, you will receive 10% off the die plus free shipping. And you will make some of the most amazing sunflowers. And I'm sure yours will probably be so much prettier <laughs> I had lots of fun and I can't wait to put these and add these to my projects so go on over to diamond dice guys and if anyone has any questions on this tutorial or how to put these sunflowers together please message me or 
leave it in the comment section um, below this video and I will be more than happy to answer any and all your questions. I hope you're all having a blessed day and I will come back very soon with some projects. Bye for now.